So thank you very much. Um, I still see people are still joining, but uh, we've got an awful lot to get through in the next hour. So my name is Keith Simons. I'm the principal scientist with SH Energy, and I'm delighted to uh, have the session where we uh, complete the beginning of the end of the journey, where we found our Open Innovation Challenge winners. And given that we've had several um, presentations where we were soliciting entries, it seemed only right that we had a session where those successful winners of the competition had an opportunity to present their ideas. So um, yeah, we'll have the presentation from our winners and then opportunity for you to ask questions. So hopefully you can find the chat box and please do enter any questions that you have um, for either myself or any of the winners in the chat box as we go along. We'll hopefully have about 10 minutes for questions, uh, 15, 10 to 15 minutes. And I would ask you to vote for any of your favorite questions so that my colleague can prioritize the questions. Um, please do remember for any question you have, do indicate who the question is for. Um, we should be OK because I'm reliably informed that um, teams can handle chat for up to 300 attendees, though if for any reason the chat function isn't available to you, then please do find the LinkedIn post where we advertised this event because there is a chat function there and we, you know, we can use that as a fallback position. Um, please remember that this session is being recorded. So, yeah, sort of thanks very much and welcome. If we move on to the next slide, Christina. Um, so, after I finished uh, saying a few words, we have um, each of our winners will give a short six minute um, presentation answering some of the questions that we've predetermined, and then hand over to yourselves for any questions and then. We've got our Director of Sustainable Fuels, Rebecca Gruen, who will be closing the session. So um, next um, slide, please. So a little bit about SH Energy. I know we have many of our colleagues here today, but for those that may be um, at the first time um, coming to a presentation from SH Energy, uh, we're a large multinational company. We operate in 25 countries and we have over 30 million customers that we satisfy with uh, renewable fuels, that is LPG, LNG, and increasingly BioLPG. Depending on where you are in the world, we're known by the brand names from our um, companies, whether it's Supergas Brass in Brazil, Calagas in the UK, Pinnacle Propane in the US, we're known by many of the brands supplying LPG and increasingly other um, products. So EM3 in Ireland is a recent addition where we help our customers use less energy and increase their energy efficiency. SunSource Energy in India is a solar company and our most recent com um, company, Circular Fuels Limited, is making renewable dimethyl ether. So a very exciting time. Um, we sell about 5 million tonnes directly of LPG to our customers, and then we wholesale a further 5 million tonnes. We have about 17,000 employees worldwide. Now, traditionally, we've been a fossil fuel company, but it is our bold ambition that by 2040, 100% of our energy products will be from renewable sources. So a very exciting time to be with the company. Next slide, please. So what is BioLPG? BioLPG is molecularly identical to fossil LPG. So the advantage here is that it's a drop in replacement, not only in terms of our own company infrastructure, but more importantly for our customers. So our customers can use BioLPG as a direct drop in replacement without having to make any changes. Um, the difference is the feedstock you know, made from the triglyceride component of used vegetable oils and animal fats. 
but by a different process. Uh, the bio-LPG is a byproduct from the hydro, hydro-treated vegetable oil or hafer root, which makes renewable diesel and sustainable aviation fuel, respectively. So the challenge is that only 5% of the process makes the propane molecule, the other 95% of the hydrocarbon product is uh, sustainable aviation fuel or renewable diesel. So the reason we set up this challenge is to engage with the academic community to perform on purpose manufacture of C3, C4 hydrocarbons. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned before, LPG is an essential fuel for many of our customers, whether it's used for cooking, for heating, industrial process or transport. Now, all our customers, we want them to use our fuel safely. They have increasing sustainability requirements. The advantage of LPG being it's clean burning fuel, so it already has very good sustainability credentials, but um, we need to reduce the overall carbon footprint of our fuels from a cradle to grave perspective. Importantly, we need to make sure it's affordable for our customers and widely available. So within our Open Innovation Challenge, we're working with the wider community, the academic and research intensive industry base to help us achieve those objectives. Next slide, please. So we've been performing substantial research and development. We've been looking at various feedstocks. Now, our ideal feedstock will be abundant, available at a point source so that we don't have to expend too much energy in concentrating it into one place, um, be from you know, sustainable or renewable or waste feedstocks. And ideally, all of the energy in the feedstock will be converted to our energy product, that is LPG. So you know, our feedstock with high potential and all the selectivity goes to LPG and maybe byproducts of other hydrocarbon fuels. So very much looking in that top right hand corner, you know, this is the SH Energy Moonshot Programme. Next slide, please. And to satisfy that, we launched the Open Innovation Competition and we have a short video that describes the journey that we've gone on. Thank you very much. Um, so we were absolutely overwhelmed and humbled by the number of entries that we had. You know, so 27 submissions of which you know, the, the winning five finalists are here with us today. So 
Um, that's enough from me, and I'd like to introduce Professor Sven Billen, who I had the pleasure um, of meeting at Penn State last week, and he will talk more about um, how um, he's going to address our challenge. Thank you very much, Sven. Thank you, Keith. And let me just say it was an absolute pleasure uh, to host you last week here at, at Penn State. So um, by way of your questions, who are we? Well, this is almost like the perfect setup for uh, one of the cheers that is just absolutely exhilarating to hear with 108,000 screaming American football fans on Saturdays. We are Penn State. Um, we are an excellent place uh, because we do lots of interdisciplinary re uh, research. And so um, of my colleagues, so myself, I'm a, a faculty member in engineering design, electrical engineering and aerospace engineering. Uh, my colleague Xiaoxing Wang is over in the um, Earth and Mineral Sciences Energy Institute, and my other colleague Sean Connect is also um, in engineering design and does research on uh, uh, plasmas uh, and plasma use uh, for many different applications. At Penn State, um, and it fits my mantra, which is innovation happens at the interfaces of disciplines. So an interdisciplinary team to attack this problem. <clears throat> so what is it we want to do? Uh, well, we are planning to demonstrate a pathway towards an integrated renewable energy system for C4, C3, C4 hydrocarbon production. And we're using uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen as feedstocks and we're using a plasma assisted catalytic process, sometimes referred to as plasma catalysis. And so um, essentially what we do is that we have uh, demonstrated uh, within a, a small plasma reactor that we believe can be scaled up significantly, um, uh, a, a, cat a catalyst surface that we then uh, place a, a low temperature plasma around. And I've got some results later on, but you can see essentially this is the cross section that you have uh, with um, the catalyst and essentially the plasma forming on the outside of that. Um, here's my colleagues and I sort of discussing the reactor where we did the proof of concept. Next slide. So what are the results that we feel um, this will bring? Well, we've already got some uh, interesting results, and I think that was one of the reasons that uh, uh, Keith and others um, uh, were interested in our process. Uh, we're going to be working to identify the catalyst materials and the preparation processes um, that we can then put into our plasma catalysis reactors um, for the hydrogenation of, of carbon dioxide into these higher order hydrocarbons uh, with carbon numbers greater than two. Um, as you can see, this is some of the uh, data that we already have, um, essentially where we're looking at um, essentially um, increased selectivity um, with uh, our, our catalysts. Um, and we have a plan for essentially increasing that selectivity as we as we move forward. So these new catalysts, we believe, will be more selective to um, C3, C4, and then also to produce a system design um, for an, for an entire renewable energy based system with no net zero emissions. So why uh, Penn State and uh, uh, partnered with SHV Energy, and what's the fit? Well, um, as Keith uh, mentioned, um, SHV Energy wants all of its energy products uh, to be sustainable and renewable by 2040, and so it has to invest in research. Um, we feel that we have an, uh, an interesting process uh, which can help contribute uh, at least some of that uh, renewable and sustainable energy. Um, our feedstocks essentially are carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Um, which means that we can go to those point sources to be able to uh, produce our process. Uh, we've proposed that process um, and we're looking to make it scalable and commercially viable. So that we're also working on a systems design for that um, to look at the optimum uh, reactor configuration, what feedstock is, reaction conditions, power source, et cetera. Next slide. What are some of the main challenges? Um, Primarily, what we're looking at currently is that um, the selectivity uh, needs to be increased. Uh, with the current catalysts, um, we have about 30% selectivity to C334, which is not bad, but it can definitely be improved. And so we're looking to improve the selectivity um, up to the 50 to 60% range. Um, we have a, a plan and we've got several candidate uh, catalysts in mind that we're working on. 
And so those will be um, uh, produced. And then uh, also we will uh, we have amazing resources here to be able to characterize them, uh, to make sure that we understand uh, what some of the, the fundamental processes are, why those catalysts work in a plasma uh, catalysis reactor. Next slide. So what we dream about is a world where energy is clean, sustainable, available to all and for the benefit of all. And so um, we realize that this is not the total solution, but we realize that um, that we can be part of the solution to getting to, to this end state. Um, so uh, <clears throat> it's important that we also take into account uh, existing infrastructure, as, as Keith has mentioned. Um, uh, so being able to develop a, um, a circular economy, essentially in taking the, um, uh, the, the byproducts and, and emissions, uh, concentrating them, um, adding them into uh, uh, with hydrogen from local point sources, et cetera, and converting those back into chemicals and fuels, uh, we feel that our process plasma catalysis is going to be an important process that's being used for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sven, and um, congratulations on keeping to the time. Um, yeah, sort of, uh, that's a big challenge of what we're doing today as well. So um, now it gives me a great pleasure to introduce um, yeah, another one of our winners. Um, we went far and wide, we looked globally, and then we found uh, someone in Amsterdam. Um, so um, pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Shiju Ravindran from the University of Amsterdam, who I also had the pleasure of um, meeting um, yeah, recently. And um, yeah, sort of Shiju again is looking at CO2 and hydrogen, but in a different way. And I'd like to invite uh, Shiju to uh, explain how he's going to uh, address our challenge. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Keith. Uh, of course, it was also a pleasure to meet you at Amsterdam and discuss uh, science as well as other topics. Uh, about myself, I work as an associate professor at the University of Amsterdam, and I also lead catalysis engineering research group at the University of Amsterdam. Um, so here is um, uh, here uh, here is a, one of the reactors that we use for doing the the, the conversions that we are we do almost regularly. So the the research focus of my group is developing sustainable chemical processes. We work on converting carbon dioxide to value added chemicals and fuels, as well as converting biomass and natural gas to uh, value added chemicals as well as fuels. And this aligns very well with the open innovation challenge topic of SHV energy, because the making renewable LPG is is definitely relevant for the society and it also matches with our own research experience okay regarding what we are going to do uh, in this case the idea is to uh, develop a bifunctional catalyst a solid catalyst to convert carbon dioxide and hydrogen to uh, LP re lpg range molecules so this is similar to uh, what Sven proposed, but uh, we don't use a plasma reactor. Here we use a thermal uh, reactor, but we also propose to develop a bifunctional catalyst in which one of the functions will develop carbon, will convert carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide. And the second function will uh, convert this carbon monoxide to propane uh, or butane. Um, one problem here is actually the formation of water, which can deactivate the catalyst. For this, we also have some ideas to modify the catalyst surface, both externally and internally, so that we can avoid the deactivation of the catalyst surface by water molecules. And with this, we hope we can develop a, a, a stable uh, catalyst and that can continue for a long time. Okay. So uh, what result will it bring? As I mentioned, uh, in this process, we hope to develop an active catalyst and selective catalyst that will convert carbon dioxide and hydrogen to propane uh, or butane. 
but at the same time this catalyst should work for longer hours or longer uh, time and otherwise it is not going to be economical so that is why uh, we want to uh, propose uh, the modifications the, that we will do on the catalyst structure the novel uh, modifications will hopefully lead to a water stable catalyst and then we will avoid the problem of the deactivation of the catalyst. So it can go on uh, for uh, longer uh, time on stream, uh, which will make the overall process economical. Next sli slide, please. Yes, um, so as I mentioned already, we, we are uh, working on developing sustainable uh, chemical processes. We are also uh, working on carbon dioxide conversion um, quite uh, intensively. So this is this matches very well uh, with the objective of uh, of SHV energy and the, the 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 target of this open innovation challenge. So um, you know, we were also we were also working on uh, converting propane and butane uh, to other molecules for example propane to acry acrylic acid and acrylonitrile butane to butadiene and butanes in all these processes carbon dioxide is is a byproduct and so now we will do the reverse we will take carbon dioxide and hydrogen and make propane and butane from that so as you can see uh, you know, as you can imagine we we now count or treat the carbon dioxide as a waste but rather than treating it as a waste now we can also look more positively as considering carbon dioxide as a renewable source. So it is a C1 uh, source which can make uh, chemicals and fuels from that. That's exactly the idea and that fits very well with the SHV energy objective. What will be the main challenges? Now, of course, I, as I mentioned, uh, the catalyst has to be stable for an economical operation and the main problem here uh, regarding the stability is the deactivation by water so uh, the, the 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 work should develop a catalyst and that can that can withstand the that can withstand the amount of water that is produced during the reaction this is a challenge and we can do the modification as i mentioned at the same time the modifications should not affect other properties of the catalyst. For example, you need acidity in this on this catalyst surface to do the, the second step of the process. Or if your modification affect the acidity, then the then the, the then the conversion will go down. So we want to avoid that. We want to keep the same uh, activity and selectivity uh, while enhancing the uh, stability of the of the catalyst. Another another challenge is uh, also you know, when, when we any treatment we do to enhance the uh, stability should not um, and should not uh, affect the cost of the catalyst. So otherwise it will be economic. It will be not economical. So what else? Yeah, I dream about. So uh, this is also you no, know, of course, uh, 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 personal recommendation that it would be interesting to look at the overall carbon dioxide footprint of uh, the SHV energy and both not only the individual processes, but on overall carbon dioxide footprint, and then look at uh, what could be the best strategy to reduce it uh, on a long term. And that will, I, I, I hope that will help SHV energy to become climate neutral in the future, and which is exactly the, the target as Keith mentioned in his introduction, uh, uh, introduction talk. That's uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Shiju. And yes, it's all about uh, achieving climate neutrality. Very important as everyone was talking about it in Glasgow a couple of weeks ago, but uh, it's great to have the uh, present people helping us on that journey. So thanks very much, Shiju. Thank you. Um, it now gives me a uh, great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Harish Menyar from Queen's University of Belfast. I know Belfast very well, but haven't had the opportunity yet to meet to meet um, Harish, but um, I think we'll be seeing each other in January. And um, Harish is going to describe how he'll be making LPG from volatile fatty acids via the anaerobic digestion process. And I'd just like to remind everyone, uh, if you do have questions, then please put them in the, the chat box. Aresh, over to you. 
Kate, thank you so much. And uh, first of all, a big thank you to SHP for organizing this uh, Open Innovation Challenge. It was very interesting and uh, I'm really delighted uh, of the journey so far and I'm looking forward to a long and fruitful collaboration with SHP. As you can see, this is my group here in Queen's University. I am senior lecturer, which is associate professor in chemical engineering at Queen's University. I have been leading catalysis at Queen's. We have a research team on catalysis, which I lead. We also have a pioneer research program through the University on Sustainable Energy, which I'm a full member of and steering group member of the UK Catalysis Hub here, which is the uh, platform to bring all the catalysis community together in the UK. We develop modular reactors, continuous flow processes for sustainable energy, renewable fuels and chemicals and biofuel additives. And I'm a big, strong believer in the India industry and academic academia collaborations. So the partnerships between the industry and the university works fantastic because both bring very diverse perspectives on the floor, which does help us and keeps us right for the commercialization perspective as well. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So this is about the proposal about the project that I would like to carry on. This is a direct decarboxylation of the volatile fatty acids. Volatile fatty acids are the small chain fatty acids. These are small chain fatty acids like C3, C4, C5 acids, C6 acids. So like acetic acid, propionic acid, butyric acid, pentanoic acid, hexanoic acid. And these are abundant, very freely, readily available into the process streams, into the water, which we get it from the anaerobic digestion. So in a typical anaerobic digester plant, when all the biomass or the waste uh, from the agricultural residues remaining goes in, it produces biogas, but it's, the efficiency is only 10 to 20%, which leaves behind almost 85 to 90% of the untreated biomass waste, which is in the water and the process water streams contain at least 3 to 10% of the volatile fatty acids. So we are targeting these volatile fatty acids to use them as the starting feedstock and we will be performing direct decarboxylation on these fatty acids to convert the fatty acids into the LPG. And these are really abundant. They are present at a very large scale. So the European Union and the UK, the targets have been to meet at least 10% of the renewable fuels in the bio, but so far only two to 3% uh, have been met out of this 10%. The volatile fatty acids itself is such a big feedstock that this can be able converted into fuels to meet this 10% requirement of blending into the renewable energy. So this is the proposal here. We will be developing a modular chemical technology to convert these volatile fatty acid feedstocks by direct decarboxylation to propane and butane mixtures. We have already developed proof of concept using a uh, new catalyst that we have developed in my lab here. We call it as QCAT, which is Queen's University Catalyst. So using new QCAT technology, we have been able to do this kind of reactions. And we would like to demonstrate a prototype uh, to, towards the end of this project to the SHV and to the industry to show as a proof of concept where we can convert volatile fatty acids successively, uh, successfully into the large yields of LPG. That will be the renewable LPG then. Can we go to the next slide, please? One of the main global challenge that we are facing at the moment is on one hand, the demand for energy is increasing. The population is increasing. People are using more energy. The demand for energy is increasing. On the other hand, the dwindling supply, the supply of fossil fuels, the crude oils is decreasing. And at the same time, it is causing climate change, carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases emissions. And so we have to tackle all these challenges. We have to find out the solutions for this challenge. And both uh, my research group and SHV, we have got the common goal. We both want to develop a better and sustainable world around us. As Keith already mentioned that SHV is targeting by 2040 to have 100% renewable production of all the products, all fuels and all LPG 100% renewable. So that is why the research theme, the focus of my research group and SHV's ambitions, both are complementing each other. That is why it's a great combination to go along 
between the strong partnership between my group in the university at, here at Queen's in Northern Ireland and uh, SHV. Some of the main challenges which I foresee here will definitely be uh, there could be some significant delays in terms of procurement of the kit in terms of all the walls or tubing or mass flow controllers that we require for construction of these modular reactors. Because of the ongoing pandemic, uh, there have been some delays in procurements, but uh, I have got contingency pl plans in place where we can mitigate uh, the delays uh, by using some of the kit available in house already in my lab and then uh, uh, foreseeing and uh, ordering and getting things done in quickly. And can we go to the next slide, please? Yes, so this is about the dream. This is about my dream. My dream is to design, develop and deploy modular chemical technologies for pro renewable technologies for production of fuels, the technologies that help us for production of sustainable energy, for decarbonization, for environment friendly technologies, and at the same time, not only do research, but outreach activities as well, because I love education as well. So we need to educate the next generation. So I would like uh, our uh, current generation of chemical engineers, chemical engineering students to get well trained in the sustainable energy technologies so that they are the future. They are our future. So they should be well trained for they are able to also use and develop the sustainable technologies. So participation of all the research and uh, teaching together. That's one of my main dreams. If we go to the next slide. So yeah, that's that's me, Kate. OK, thanks very much, um, Arash. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, I do look forward to seeing you very soon. Yeah, okay. I'm looking forward to hosting you in Belfast. I look forward to that. It's been far too long since I was over there. So. OK, um, so thanks very much, Harash. Um, it's now a um, pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Janka Lui of Droplet Research Services in Scotland. Um, and um, he's going to describe how we can make LPG again from volatile fatty acids, but sourced from seaweed, which is one of my boss's favourite topics. So Janka Lui. If you want to enable your um, camera oh. and microphone, there we go. Great. Okay. First of all, thanks for case for this great opportunity to work with the SHV. And uh, a few words about uh, our organization. I think different from all previous winners of this uh, open innovation challenge. We are a contract research organization. So a small company that we currently have eleven employees. Uh, we collocate with the University of St. Andrews and uh, uh, our, our special art in thin gas conversions and the products are upgrading, given our long history with sensor technology in the last maybe 15 years. From 2018, we established a standalone CRO that provides re research service to different customers almost uh, across the globe. Uh, Starting from a thin gas conversion product uh, upgrading, we slowly expanded into other areas like uh, biomass conversion, uh, renewables, material size. Uh, all these are depending by our uh, long history in industry and also our expertise and equipment uh, we built up over the last 15 years. Uh, this slide gave a brief idea uh, uh, very simplified scheme show what uh, what we proposed. This is actually the compilation of the lateral photosynthesis, bar catalysis, the chemo catalysis in one complete scheme uh, simplified to a great extent. So what, what we propose to use seaweed to capture CO2 uh, powered by sunlight, of course, to produce seaweed, which followed by hydrolysis to extract carbohydrate uh, portions, Ricardo undergo further uh, fermentation, chemocatalysis to produce the butane or propane, depending different uh, intermediate chemicals they uh, produced through the by process. So our uh, thoughts will be the HDO rations, 
uh, in, in this uh, overall seaweed-based bar refinery. The solid residue from seaweed hydrolysis can be undergo further gasification, produce bar hydrogen to partially supply the hydrogen required for the steel rations. Overall, we believe we can close the cycle by recycling the CO2 through the photosynthesis again. Uh, what kind of results we can expect from this? Uh, basically, we will desire to since the highly active selective hydrogenase catalysts. Uh, we will identify the optimal red conditions and also proper red setup for producing propane building with a higher the low hydrogen consumption. Uh, we will collect uh, sufficient uh, solid experiment data to advise the overall feasibility of the seaweed based bar refinery also gave some opinion on the technical feasibility and the overall techni uh, technological economics analysis. Next slide, please. So, why, uh, so what will fit? can ask as the SHA. A drug that have extensive experience as it is in industrial analysis in petrochemical energy sector. Uh, we actually demonstrate the concept of the hybrid bar catalysis, the chem catalysis in synthetic aviation fuel productions, which we believe can transferable to the production of bar LPG in this study. And uh, compare with the traditional biomass, like the uh, land plant, seaweed possess a lot of different uh, advantages, like uh, it's have high carbohydrate content, and fast growing with low land use, very low level of uh, lignin, which presents a great challenge for our refinery. So this, given its uh, abundant, uh, abundancy, it could give uh, uh, a great chance to fulfill the SHV's uh, Hydroplasm renewable ambition by 2040. The main challenge, like uh, uh, other winners already pointed out, is the selectivity. Uh, because in this case, we need to uh, convert uh, intermediate chemicals by hydrogenation to propane butane. Our mitigation. Uh, measures would be developed from highly active with the catalysts. We already identify some more promising uh, candidates on the batch conditions. We will attain that batch conditions to a uh, continuous flow ration for the uh, easier to scale up at the commercialization at the end. Uh, the other challenge would be the cost uh, because so far the HDO rations is generally catalyzed by lower metals like a platinum, palladium based catalysts. We were through the rational test design of partially or fully replacing local metals with base metals, uh, try to maintain the same catalytic activity and sensitivity, but uh, dramatically reduce the catalyst cost. From our point of view, there will be a long transition period. We have to rely on carbon based fuels like a bar LPG for foreseeable future. So maybe more investment in RD is required to further improve the overall carbon and energy efficiency of the current or on the developing process. Like uh, the addressed by this open innovation challenge initiated by SHA. Uh, in the long run, I think the green hydrogen or other long carbon energy vector like ammonia map the important role in energy sector. Uh, maybe as actually we also should be paying attention to the technology diversification, which at the end maybe electricity or electrification of the, all this uh, uh, LPT production or other uh, energy sector have uh, great challenges, but uh, maybe you cannot rely on a single sector or single uh, uh, approach to provide the by answer fit all challenges. Yeah, that's all about uh, me. Uh, thanks for your this great opportunity. Thank you, Taolin. And uh, I do hope to get to St Andrews as well uh, in the near future. It's been a couple of years since I've been there. So thank you very much. And I see there's some uh, great discussion in the chat box. Um, and we're well on time, so thanks to all the speakers. Um, I'd now like to ask uh, Dr Taolin from Enzyme Tree in China 
who's going to describe his approach for microbial conversion of lignocellulose to propane. Um, thank you, Tao Lin. Hello, every, everybody. It's Tao. Uh, I will be here on behalf of the company of Enlan Tree. I'm the CEO of Enlan Tree. Enlan Tree is a pioneer company in the biotechnology. Just, just as the name of the Enlan Tree, we just want to plant a lot of enzyme in the desert. We design a lot of new enzyme and to want to develop a very green technology. And for the green technology, we, we want to use it to produce a lot of wonderful products, just uh, this in this section, the uh, uh, bipropane. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, one, we want to produce the biofilms just like the produce the uh, alcohol. We use the photomutation to uh, produce the biofilm from the uh, a lot of biomass, just like just like the cow straw, uh, wheat straw, and rice straw. And uh, uh, in this um, progress, uh, the very important. Is, um, uh, King points is the strings. We use strings to perform this process in a very green process. Um, it means that the process will, will be very simple and the product is very uh, low cost. And also the process is uh, so sustain, sustainable because uh, the process uh, um, uh, will 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 have uh, will will have no uh, carbon offset uh, in, in emission and uh, um, and uh, the 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 waste will be very low. Next slide, please. So in this uh, process, uh, we were to bring a very important uh, uh, key point is strings because in these strings we will set up a lot of new N9 pathways. If we have these new enzyme pathways, uh, the steps will be uh, cut down and the yield will be high. And also, uh, because uh, all the process uh, is performed by a very green process, because the process very will have no uh, wastes and the energy cons consumption is no. Also, uh, the, the carbon dioxide uh, will have no uh, Evasion. So, in all the new N9 pathway, we are developed a very green process. Next slide, please. So, we want to uh, push this uh, green technology and uh, to be the carbon uh, the partner with the SHV energy. We want to uh, use this uh, process to uh, produce LPG. We want to to uh, take over. Uh, one percent of the market uh, of the LPG in the year of 2040, because LPG market is very huge. So if we can to um, push this um, technology to the uh, this product, they will to uh, net a lot of uh, biofilms in the market. Next slide, please. In in the press, the challenge is to uh, design a very stronger string. We will use uh, a company added design to design the enzyme and the, en the, and the enzyme pass. Because the enzyme is new and the enzyme pass is new, so we we'll need to update the air glow rings. We will use a lot of uh, technology just like uh, Mocum color, neutral network, and AI technology to design the new enzyme and the new enzyme um, pathway. It's just like a, a box of chocolate. A lot of enzyme will to combine and to produce wonderful products. Next, next nice place. In the future, we want to uh, support SH2 energy to push forward the biofilms into larger market instead of fossil oil. And we will want to do better to support SHV energy to find more uh, 
interesting product. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Tao Lin. Um, I love the ambition that you showed as well as the technical ambition that all of the, um, the winners showed. Um, if I could invite um, all of the speakers back up onto the stage. Um, we've given my colleague, um, Dr. Priscilla Maziero, the unenviable task of um, going through the, the, the questions. Um, I do have a few you know, questions of my own as well, but um, Priscilla, are there any questions that uh, you've been able to identify that haven't been answered within the chat function. And if anyone else has any other questions, please, and, you know, include them. Yeah, I, I just see, hello everyone. I just see for the, the first question that we received from Mr. Alexei, uh, that I'm not sure if it's for Swen or for Sishu, in terms of the data that they, they that were showed, it's from lab scale or, or there is a minimal value product I guess it's, it's for Swen, but I'm not sure. I, I think it was that was uh, done after Shiju's talk, but um, I think it is kind of looking at uh, maybe all of us here. Um, so um, we are still fairly early stage. Um, it is laboratory scale. Uh, part of what we are looking to do is to um, put together a plan for how to scale that up to um, at least a, a demonstration a reactor. Um, but I, I think, you know, uh, and Keith can maybe comment on this, but, you know, was looking for some low TRL um, uh, technologies. Uh, so not, not, not at, the, not at a, a, a demonstration scale uh, reactor yet. Um, probably just to follow up on that point, Sven. Um, so, um, yeah. What is the potential for uh, you know, plasma catalysis? Are there any developments elsewhere that we could be inspired as to the scale that plasma could achieve? Yeah, so we've looked at some other uh, market spacers. Uh, so there are large um, ozone uh, genation. I don't know if that's a proper word, but essentially, you know, large scale for essentially uh, sterilizing water, et cetera. Um, and so we've looked at that as kind of uh, some um, um, impetus for where we might be able to get to. Um, and those can be fairly large scale. Thank you. And also, Swan, I, I just uh, follow here in the, the chat some great discussions that uh, Lauren also uh, challenge here in terms of the transformer that we are using in the plasma if you can comment uh, about yeah. that yeah i think lauren is bringing up some some valid points uh, i think if you look at our research um, we we do have an understanding for how much actual power we look at the leisure jus patterns essentially the iv curves that, that are that are occurring um and we're not uh you know so I'm an electrical engineer. So you know that element and that aspect, I think we've got uh, um, um, very well, you know, understanding of that. And and uh, she does bring up some some very valid points. Uh, but I think those are points that we are addressing. Yeah. And uh, Kitty, probably you can answer these question, these general questions from Mr. Alexei in terms of the the, the scale, I mean, of the the TRL that uh, the, uh, about the the Open Innovation Challenge. If you can explain the, the requirements that we uh, when we launch it, the, the Open Innovation, I think would be good, right? Because I, so, I think it's the same for all the challenge that we have. So when we launched the challenge, we were very open in terms of the technology readiness level um, from just an idea up to if someone had a demo plant already making C3, C4 hydrocarbons, then we could look at how to fund that. Um, I'm a great believer that we need to feed the pipeline with ideas. And so that's why we were very welcoming to see low technology readiness levels um yeah which has been represented but we've probably got a range from you know what, what one to four is probably represented here building on some of it the higher trls based on work that has gone before 
So, of course, thinking about the work of Shizu, people have tried CO2 plus hydrogen over bifunctional catalysts. But, of course, Shizu's addressing the challenge in that is the water sensitivity of those catalysts. Um, then other works, you know, such as Fen, you know, sort of um, trying to have CO2 plus hydrogen to get increased selectivity to C3C4s. Um, and then, of course, the work with, uh, you know, Taolin, there's been a little bit of biotechnology routes. We've explored those ourselves at the University of Ulster. So I think we need to be feeding the pipeline. And one thing that we will encourage, you know, all of the, um, the winners to do is, is publish their work so that others will be able to build on this part of the open innovation challenge because that's how science develops so it's not just a snapshot it's part of a journey so that's why we welcome you know working with the academic community to try different ideas some will succeed some will fail but um, all of them will be heroic whether or not we're winning or we're just learning Thank you, Keith. And also for, I think here for the, our specialists, our new partners, specialists in Catalyst, uh, Mr. Nick, you also uh, are asking, what's your main thoughts on the Catalyst to, to produce the hydrogen from water? Yeah, I can uh, have a couple of thoughts on that. So, because we have been doing some photo reforming of uh, uh, alcohols and glycerols for production of hydrogen as well and electrocatalysis as well and one of my, my PhD students is working on electrocatalytic hydrogenations and hydrogen evolution reactions. So we have some experience in this area and uh, basically the challenge is uh, the stability of the catalyst and uh, mass transfer effects are very important here in electrocatalysis even for production of hydrogen there it's a multiphasic reaction there is liquid solid catalyst on the electrode conductive electrical conductivity as well as mass transfer of the chemicals from liquid phase to the solid phase so scale up for electrochemical processes is quite difficult so it can be done at a small scale in the lab scale very easily but uh, for a large scale production it is challenging Yeah, I think a lot of it would be the gasification. So that's have been practiced for a very long time in industry. So we've got all kinds of different carbon materials from coal, natural gas, biomass. In the present catalyst at a high enough temperature, you can produce thin gas or thin gas contains CO2. Of course, the main challenge is the carbon emission, but as long as you can capture reutilize CO2 uh, you can produce hydrogen in a renewable way. Thank you. If it is uh, just to add my thought there, if it is about simple electrolysis to make hydrogen uh, from water, then we know already the technology, you know, uh, uh, it, is it is developed. Uh, but if you are using the renewable electricity, then uh, we are not at a uh, at a stage uh, to compete economically uh, with the steam reformed uh, uh, with the hydrogen coming from steam reforming. So uh, I think there is an other than a technological challenge, we also have a economic challenge uh, in that aspect. And also, I think we have other questions here uh, from Pat Patricia uh, in terms of uh, efficiency uh, and carbon intensity uh, of the process that we that uh, you presented here. Uh, the, uh, Patricia mentioned that the process are aiming to reduce the carbon emissions, but part of that is also make efficient use of biomass biomass resource. Would any any process be prepared to make a projection? projection on what they can achieve in terms of carbon intensity or energy efficiency? Hi Patricia, uh, this is Harish here again. Uh, as uh, I have seen from the numbers from the anaerobic digestion coming through and uh, from the hydrothermal liquefaction of the biomass coming through. So 
we are currently at the level of around 10% of the biomass is being converted to biogas and uh, 85 to 90% still remains there either in the form of the solid residue or in the form of the slurry which we have in the anaerobic digesters. So through this technology in my project, we are aiming to utilize this 10% or 5 to 10% of the volatile fatty acids which are present into the process waters into the slurry coming from the anaerobic digester. This can equally be applied to the hydrothermal liquidation technology where again the process waters have uh, around 8 to 10% of fatty acids into it. So we can double the utilization of the biomass from 10% to 20% by combining the anaerobic digestion with uh, production of LPG together through volatile fatty acids. So if we are looking at increasing the carbon intensity from 10 to 20 percent there. I hope it makes sense. OK, so uh, I think we're we're coming to the hour. Um, I had a number of questions that um, we will discuss us another time, you know, such as how will you be able to work with each other so that we can become greater than the sum of the parts, um, then how we can actually work together to ad address some of the other challenges. Quite often it can be the separation and all the downstream unit operations that can be the challenge. But these are uh, you know, great discussions, maybe another open innovation challenge to address some of those. But so that we can finish on time, I would like to uh, invite um, Rebecca Grun who's the director of sustainable fuels for SH Energy, just to say um, a few closing words. So thank you to all um, you know, sort of for, for, for the attendees, but Rebecca. Yes, well, thank you so much, Keith. Um, all I want to say is a massive thank you. Um, first of all, to Professor Bob Toos, who chaired our very hard working panel, trying to work out who of the 27 wonderful proposals we would award and as you've seen we couldn't choose one because there were too many that were good and so we have this fantastic range of five uh, finalists five winners which is really just the beginning because we know we need a lot more and we're going to be doing more things like this so uh priscilla christina the innovation team innoget uh, thank you very much obviously of course keith our wonderful principal scientist who has really led this process extremely well. We thank you all for your participation, everybody today on our previous webinar and on all of the discussions we've had online, because this is a really important topic, not just for us, but for all of the millions of customers around the world who rely on the LPG industry for their off-grid, decentral, clean, efficient and affordable energy. They want to defossilize, we want to help them we need your support to find the right way to do that using all of the feedstock that we have in the world, all of the process technologies we have in the world and of all of your brilliant ideas. So thank you for collaborating. Thank you for embracing open innovation, for turning up today or listening to this when it's recorded. And we look forward to the next phase, which will involve even more so that we can all meet our dream of defossilizing our world. Thank you very much for today.